Words of solidarity and support are wonderful and needed, but actions are better. This is a time of struggle and change for many communities, and even though this is a tech noodling YouTube channel, tech is not neutral, and this channel will never be neutral either. Links and resources for organizations working towards social justice and how you can actively participate will be in the description. Effects pedals are willfully obtuse. Even a piano, with all its intricacies, reveals its inner workings more generously than the humble stomp box. Its design invites acceptance. Plug it in, turn it on, a new sound comes out. Turn the knobs and the sound changes. What sorcery is this? Surely something far beyond my understanding of the world, I always thought. I was curious, but didn't dare ever open one of these boxes because what if I broke it? A fear that echoed my associated forbidding childhood memories of unopened VHS tapes and worshipped Game Boy cartridges. Guitar pedal schematics are really easy to find, just sitting there, waiting to be built. But there's such a disconnect between those squiggly symbols and the box. The idea that this picture is inside this box. It can't be that simple, that straightforward. I wanted to build a guitar pedal. I tried in 2017. It was a distortion circuit, but it didn't work. I found the schematic to be really confusing at the time. And so I just felt really stupid when it didn't work and I stopped. Last April, I found some new resources and a simpler circuit. A transistor fuzz, aka the fuzz face circuit. I sourced components and soldered wires to pots to prep for breadboarding. They sat in a bag for a year because I was afraid there would be a repeat of the first experiment. But then almost exactly a year later, I dug out my set aside bag, my tab of links, and decided today was the day. Today, I was gonna breadboard that fuzz circuit. This webpage tutorial from Small Bear Electronics is excellent. It highlights the portion of the schematic that you're currently breadboarding. I have trouble understanding schematics, but I'm getting better, and this walkthrough definitely helped. But finally, the moment of truth. Contact. Cable to plug. Pick to string. worked. First it didn't though. It sounded like this. Kind of gross. Um, uh, almost like there was a, a gate happening, like the full signal wasn't getting through. Uh, similar to when you have like um, kind of noise cancellation on a microphone in like web conferencing software. I feel like people are more familiar with that concept now where like it's just it's cutting off too much signal. So with that in mind I wondered if a resistor value was too high uh, because you know thinking about things like okay resistor value that cuts things down um, is something too high and there's one 33k resistor uh, that is attached to the transistor that is controlled by this pot here and I wondered if that could possibly be why. So I swapped out the value. And after changing it to a 470 resistor, it sounded like this. Which shook me. I couldn't believe it. Um, it, it sounded really good. I was, I was excited. Now, transistors can have different tolerances, especially these tin can um, resistors, so I feel like that's probably what's going on here. Um, that'd be my guess as to why that, that value changed stuff up so dramatically. But I felt so happy to be able to think about the problem logically and pinpoint what the fix was in the circuit. That was just really huge for me. I feel like I talk about this journey trope a lot when it comes to my projects really trying to make a point that more often than not, I started with zero formal knowledge and eventually got there. For a lot of my formative years, I felt really stupid. The people around me, for the most part, with the exception of a few that I love very, very much, reinforced that feeling, like I was incapable of accomplishing 
anything. And at the time, I believed that to be true. I've been slowly but surely proving that to be an inaccurate reality. Completely false, in fact, and this humble, simple circuit on a breadboard providing a warm, fuzz tone was yet another step in that journey. So I put this out there because I think we all feel discouraged from time to time, um, to some degree, and I think it's important that everyone, everyone's well, pause for a moment and take stock in how far you've come. Um, just to really appreciate the journey and the victories along the way. This fuzz circuit though, I... I love how it sounds! It's the thick kind of fuzz but without too much noise. I, I like it. I like it a lot. I, I want to try tweaking some values, uh, really dial everything in, um, and then possibly make a custom PCB for it followed by an enclosure, make a real pedal. Uh, that's kind of the long-term goal for this thing. Uh, in general, I've got a couple of audio music tech related ideas um, related to effects uh, that I would like to try out this year. Uh, so hopefully uh, that will be coming. This was definitely um, the first step in a, a series of steps towards that goal. Uh, but that's gonna do it uh, for this video. Uh, and until next time, this is from Blitz City DIY.